welcome back. In this video, we will use multiple sections. To be more specific, each section will represent a product line in the Apple products. So each product line has several products. So a table view will have multiple sections. Each section has multiple rows. So let's do that. The first thing I want to do is let's quit clean up our code because we will have a lot of things that we want to use. Let's delete the view did load and did receive memory warning, things like that. Okay. So the first thing is we don't need that products anymore because we want to have our, our um, data source to be product lines. So I will have mark okay. data source. Okay, and I want also want to have this table view data source to be things like UI table view data source. It's the same thing, but I want to be more specific, and it's just a kind of habit. Okay, so let's have the product lines. Let's delete that one. Okay, I have a var product lines. Okay, and it's kind of the same, but instead of an array of products, we have an array of product line product line okay so this I also want it to be a computed property like that and I will return product lines dot product lines okay and I also want this to be a lazily instantiated property variable okay because um, I don't want it has it holds pretty much many content many data so I want it to be a uh, product line okay uh, product lines. because this is quite large so I want to just whenever I want to use it then instantiate it that's the whole thing about this lazily instantiated property okay when I want to use it or when I refer to it like over here I will refer to it as Product lines dot count, so it will instantiate it. If I don't use it at all, then it won't in be instantiated. Okay. So the first thing is number of sections in table view. I will return product lines dot uh, count. Okay. And how about the table view number of rows in section? Well, that's very simple. Let's delete that warning. The first thing I want to know which product line is that at this section okay so each section is one product line so let's the product line to be product lines subsection so at this section is this product line so I will return product line dot products so that product lines dot products are all the products in this product line and I will want to count those Okay, so this is the number of products in the section. Okay, and over this cell for row at index path, I also have to change some of those. Okay, the first thing is I want to know what product line is in this index path. Okay, so let's product line equals product lines sub index path. Instead of index path dot row, it has index path dot section. Okay, so at this index path, it has this section. This cell is in that section. Okay, and also we want to do uh, product lines line dot products sub index path dot row, and I think that is that. Okay these will be the same because this product is updated with this product line okay so let's recap first thing first we'll have to need a data source to be updated to be the product lines I want it to be a lazily instantiated variable whenever I want to refer to it I call it I use it it will be instantiated okay and over here the number of sections in the table view just simply return product lines dot count the number of rows in section meaning that the number of table uh, the number of products in the product line so I will grab the product line 
at product line subsection and then we return product line dot products dot count and over the cell for row at index path I will grab the product line with product line sub index dot section so remember that the index path has section and it has row so at this product line I can uh, I can access the products property and at the index path the row at that index is the product and then the rest is the same okay so let's run all right so there we go we have a lot of things so we can represent all of those products in this table okay I have to be apo apologize is because this um, those images are quite wide so it looks distorted like this but later on when we use a custom cell will represent a very nice custom cell meaning that this cell can be long uh, taller and the image maybe grabs the whole screen okay it will look like the, the introduction to this project okay thing we need to do is if you look at this app so far we have all the products right we have the uh, if you look at here the Apple watch iPad iPhone iOS those are iOS or those are Macs so what's the point of the section right we will need something to uh, separate those sections right so in order to rep, uh, separate those sections we will need to implement or override another method called table view title for header in session so let's do that so first thing first oh I will find table view okay and maybe I don't remember all the things so that I cannot type all those so I will look at it here so I will need the title for header so let's drag out drag down so we have title for header in section we also can do title for folder in section but right now we need the title for header okay and in here oh I need to override okay. and in here just let's just grab the uh, section at this section right the product line let's product line equals product line subsection okay and then I will return the name of this product line dot name all right so let's run all right look at that so we have i devices with mac down here we have software and ipod and itunes iCloud and apple pay okay so we have all of those products very nice so apple watch there we go very good